Yeah, it's actually fun to play my piece. Uh, sometimes it isn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> but this this particular piece is, is very, as I say to most people, it's the most optimistic piece I've ever written. And I guess that must have been a subconscious pan pandemic thing because it just materialized that way. Uh, I, I normally write very serious pieces, as, as they say, and as, as, as some people describe it, or very abstract pieces. Um, that's where I tend to go, but this one was the most programmatic and the most optimistic and happy and straight. Well, most of my straight pieces are straightforward, but this, in a way, is even more so, I think, very simple and kind of hearkening to a simplicity in life and also an admiration of nature, I guess. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the that's where um, the word optimism comes from, because I, I read in the description about um, sort of your, it's your optimism of the outcome of the pandemic, the situation we're in almost in that um, the emulation of certain natural phenomena could be what sort of saves us in the end. So I, I assume that's what you mean by optimism. In a way, and I think I wrote this really around late spring, early summer, and I really felt a need in society that we needed a positive outlook. And where can we derive that positive outlook if not if not from ourselves? And the subject of the commission being being inspired by Jean-Paul Riotel and his works were often inspired by nature. There are so many uh, birds and uh, wildlife um, landscapes that he uses in his paintings. So naturally. I would also be inspired by by that. Yeah. So about um, Riopel, um there is there is some kind of analogy I can see from um, the score between sort of the textures that that seem so distinct, and also his um, use of the uh, palette knife, which was something that he kind of was novel for Canadian art in general, but. So was that something you were thinking of, or? Uh, not as much. I, I know the works of which you speak, and uh, some of them are in the exhibition, but I was more inspired by his lithography, even. There's this one work called Le Ibu, where it's different owls, different, but it's, it's an owl, but they're all different. And he, it's a really large work and just the cleanliness and, and yet each owl has its own character. That's, that was really special work for me. And the work that I ended up being inspired by, uh, Metzneo Capsulmont, it's a two-sided work. And one side, there are pheasants, they're white pheasants, and they're going through a white net, the filet, as if they were captured by the net. But there's just this dynamism about the work. You can feel the pheasants still mm, swirling and flying around in the net. And it's very multicolored. There are also other layers of other imprinted objects behind and in front. So it's multi-layered, but then you still get a feeling of one two-dimensional work. And then on the other side of this piece of wood that he did this painting on is a really large goose, a white goose. And then there's like a border of little birds going around it. Also very multicolored and I saw it for the first time last week. They took us into the exhibition, and it's so much better than in the books. It's a really beautiful work, and he also add, added like some kind of sparkle. Like you have to look really closely, but there's just such attention to detail, and yet there's 
a dynamism and a natural uh, vivacity to to the whole work. So I think it's it's very all inclusive in in terms of what he's capable of. Interesting. Yeah. Well, the description of the evil kind of uh, reminded me also of something else I noticed in the score, which was the there seemed to be you seem to be building a distinct texture, and then every once in a while, it, it, you know, you can notice that something outside of this texture happens and then it slowly infects all the other parts until now we have this new texture and that kind of the way you describe the the owls and how you have one and they are all sort of different but they're juxtaposed that sort of reminded me of what I saw on the score. Yeah actually that more so came from my studies of my studies. I watched a lot of YouTube videos of geese and also a couple of documentaries about geese and their migration patterns. And so actually in the beginning of the piece, the uh, the harmonics that go that, that do the hocket, it's actually mimicking the call of the geese before they take off. And okay. this is why I say it's like so programmatic and very rarely do, do I do such a direct um, correlation but whenever that material comes again it's the call of the geese so the geese call each other and they make sure that everyone's ready to take off before they they take off to the migration and then and then when, when the they, inner parts come in after that call i i kind of understand now. yeah so then and then everyone's just taking off and and then to signal when they're landing then one or two geese will kind of dip and they're flying and they'll do a little bit of dip. It's kind of a maneuver to signal to the rest of the group, hey, let's land. So once they do the dip, one, one bird does the dip, then another bird in, in the same part of the V formation will also echo that dip to signal to everyone, okay, we're gonna land soon. So that's, that's why uh, in the music, there's one person that triggers the landing, so to speak, I or, see, or, I see. Or, or the change in trajectory. Yeah. Interesting. That's so fascinating to hear. Um, yeah, I mean, one can't help but think about Messiaen when, um, when you think of birds and music. Do you have any influence on your compositional thought? Or? Not Messiaen in particular, but Michael Ersteli recently wrote us a bunch of pieces that he named after animals and some of the form that I chose was based on his re most recent quartets that he wrote for us. So it's kind of sounds like a pattern, but there are subtle changes within the pattern and then working it out. So when the pattern is finished, then that's when that section is finished. So that's what I borrowed quite a bit from. And then the slower parts, um, like the parts where the birds are resting uh, with the harmonic stationary chords, that's a Jörg Frey influence, just really peaceful, calm and open sounding chords that, that I thought would fit well. Okay. Yeah, both those composers are um... Uh, the quartet's premiering their works um, today and also this weekend, I believe. So, yeah, that's right. So it's kind yeah, of yeah. all encompassing. It actually all fits together very well. <laughs> yeah, it also is very, It's it, it would then be naturally a staple of this time in, in your and the quartet's lives then. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, a visual artist outside of the, the quartet, but you have your own visual art practice. Um, is do you have any connection between uh, as you know and um, your visual art practice? Oh, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so this pastel is something I did a few years ago and I mean we had to copy a picture so I 
Is it a canola field? Uh, it looks like a canola field, but I don't think it originally is a canola field. But, and I, I do dabble in different things like this. Just before pandemia, we did um, a, a, a printing course. So oh, the light's better this way. So we combined with other people in the class. So I did the the block with the the little kind of tick marks in it. And then someone else did the one with the bonums on it. And then so we just printed both of them on top of each other to see what that would give. And I guess, I guess this is quite representative of what I normally do in my music too, just like super abstract and attention to detail, but systematic at the same time. <laughs> I see, yeah. Which is kind of funny. Um, it seems yeah. like, uh, in the, at least in the score of Juno, and you were also saying that it's probably the most um, directly um, analogous piece to, to you know examples in nature that maybe there is you were almost it almost seems like you were using the score as a canvas because once I read a bit about it and I heard a bit more about the piece and I saw the score I started to think you know you can almost hang this up on a wall as a piece of art itself <laughs> and kind of see what's going on you know right <laughs> yeah and I really wanted to also explore uh just working with very little material, uh, the the whole mechanism of, of birds flapping, it's really just an oscillation. So that's why you hear lots of oscillation between two, two or three notes. And that's really what I wanted to use as the basis of the whole piece. So you don't really hear that many melodies or anything like that. The whole piece is really based on oscillations between notes. There's a definitely contrast between stop notes and harmonic notes. I thought maybe there was some kind of, you know, play there. Uh, so in the beginning, as I said, the the harmonic ones are, are the call. In, in the middle, where it's just quiet and calm, I really just wanted to use harmonics as color. Uh, like for example, if, if the geese are resting on a lake at dusk to kind of give that image and the harmonics help to blur the stopped notes, but also give a really cool and yet open color. We have the last question was just, is there anything else you'd like to mention about this piece? And because you've been um, preparing it with the quartet now, so how's that been, the process of bringing it to life? It's great. It's funny because I just read the interview that Stephanie and Isabel did with Alain Brunet and they say, because sometimes <laughs> we we talk about the composers when they're not there in rehearsal and they joked that they couldn't do that with my piece. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. yes, <laughs> and yes, yesterday, yesterday they were even you know, joking around uh, of some of my engraving errors or my formatting errors because we're so, we're we're on the case for Composer's Kitchen and all our participants to be like, it has to be laid out nicely and try not to make mistakes and like, oh, what is the composer thinking, right? <laughs> they didn't, they didn't see this mistake. And I mean, it, they've been very gracious and I'm very grateful for the commission. Uh, it was, you know, Arta Musica wanted to have a piece by a young composer, and we went th we went through lots of ideas of who could be the composer for this particular project, and I'm just happy that they picked me. I think it fit really well with the Riopel aspect of it. They knew that I really enjoy art, so that fit really well as well. And in the end. I think all the pieces of the program fit nicely together as well. It looks like a really eclectic program, but each piece offers its own identity and its own perspective, and yet it all hangs together uh, really well. So it's, I, I also like thought about that each piece on the program is kind of based on the same form. 
of just very sectional and not too long sections. Like it's just a little vignette here, another vignette, and then you just go through a piece like that. Yeah. Yeah, good ratio. Oh so, well, yeah, yeah. I think I think um, having your piece in there really speaks to uh, the advocates for the quartet's versatility. They already are such a such an eclectic quartet doing what they do with young composers and performers and their own uh, practice and their own music. Yeah, we can't wait to perform it in person for an audience very soon, <laughs> hopefully. I'm excited to hear it too. <laughs>